welcome. I hope you enjoy the conversation you're about to see between me and another comedian about religion and comedy. These are conversations I'm calling Disorganized Religion. God bless. And for those atheists out there, may nothing await you after this life. If you went with the name brand, Maybe but little... I went with the Malto meal. They were a rocker. Is that the one, like those commercials where the guy was like walking in a duck walk? You know, the bags at the bottom. You guys are, are you old enough to remember no, that? No, I don't I, remember I'm vaguely that. remembering. Remember because it was like the ba- the boxes were on top and mm-hmm. they had the fucking satchels yeah. of yep. cereal at the bottom. Yeah. Hmm. And the old commercial was a guy duck walking. <laughs> I, I don't w- remember I that. I would get a satchel <laughs> that was, that was of very raisin Midwest. bran. You'd pour milk yeah. on it and it would just all immediately dissolve. <laughs> It turns into like a, a raisin like paste. A yeah, yeah. Good stuff. It was gross. Uh, we're, we're ready and rolling, buddy. We're ready? Oh, we're on. Sweet. Let's Welcome to about poverty. another Cereal. episode of Disorganized <laughs> Religion. Uh, as always, I'm Seth Lawrence, and we've got our disembodied voice of the spirit, Travis Clyburn. Peace be with you. <laughs> and today's guest <laughs> is a fantastically funny and beautiful uh, and new pretty funny woman, Alice Rose <laughs> Hamilton. <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> Welcome. I'm so excited to have you here. Thank you. I'm thrilled we could finally meet up. Absolutely. We've been trying for uh, a couple three months. months. Yeah. yeah. A couple, three months. It's been, it's been a lot of rain checks. It's been a long road, mm-hmm. but we're, we're finally here. We've made it. We made it. And uh, I can't wait to get into why you hate religion. But so first, <laughs> we're going to talk about... Say that Travis Clyburn is the most Bonnie and Clyde type of name I've ever heard <laughs> in my entire life. Oh, for sure. <laughs> yeah. Straight out of the West. Yeah. The Wild West. The Dust Bowl. <laughs> Indeed. <laughs> I have to say, today, Travis is, is moving, and uh, he pulled up in a U-Haul. Like yeah. a real lesbian. I am aggressively sweaty too, <laughs> so I'm glad I'm not on camera right now. You can just be glistening in the light. Uh, the glow, <laughs> the glow. It'd bring out the spirit in you, though, Travis. It would. Exactly. That ghostly glimmer. Mm-hmm. Welcome. Thank well, you. let's talk about your beginning beginnings in comedy. How long okay. have you been doing this? Um, I've been doing this since uh, December 2016. Oh, okay. Uh, that was the first time I went up. Yeah. And where was that? That was at a terrible institution that is now closed. It was oh. called Flappers Claremont. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and oh, it yeah. was or bad. It closed, what, eight, nine months ago? Almost I, a year, maybe? I think maybe it's been over a year. I think. Over a year. I think. I, I mean, don't know. It the seems... second they said they were closing, the world just fled. <laughs> like, fled no one Claremont? even pretended to try. <laughs> Yeah, I saw a few photos of people at Flappers Claremont. So yeah. that's where you started. That's and where that I experience, started. how was it? Um, I mean, I feel like it was good for me because I was so nervous. Mm. I was shaking, my voice was shaking. Yeah. I was terrified. And I felt like genuinely the worst thing happened, which is the first time that I did stand up, I got some pretty good laughs. Oh. And so then I was like, I'm so great at this. <laughs> I don't even, even need to. Even when I was so nervous. Yeah. yeah. So I just would like every every single week I'd come back with like three new minutes and it would just get worse and worse and worse <laughs> and worse. Because I had that first, I was chasing those first laughs. Right. And then not thinking. Right. I remember uh, I, I, I soft quit for oh, like okay. six months. Yeah. And uh, during that time, I decided, like, all my friends were like, hey, when are you going to go up again? We're going to come see you do stand-up. Yeah. And oh, I was, God. like, hoping, like, they would just eventually forget <laughs> and stop asking me. Right, right. Uh, but they didn't, so eventually I put another one on the books. And at when Claremont? I, no, this was oh, at the okay. Ha Ha. Oh, all right. Yeah. The all right. Ha Ha. Ha Ha Ha. Uh, I went up at the Ha Ha, and yeah. I remember looking at all of my jokes one day after I'd been just bombing my ass off at Flappers Claremont and just looking at them and being like none of this is funny oh no fuck i'm not funny and then i was like oh, wait this no. is a good thing that i can look at all of this and be like none of this is funny so yeah. maybe i do know what is funny <laughs> sure so good then barometer, I, I right i took it as a as a good thing that i could just suddenly like there was a shift where i was like oh i don't want to bomb anymore mm. and if i say any of this trash i'm gonna bomb yeah so then i wrote some stuff that was funny <laughs> 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 and never look back, huh? Yeah. Always uh, forward now. It was, I mean, it was great circumstances because when I went to the Ha Ha, there was this yeah. guy who was doing stand up f- and he had brought like 
17 of his family members. Oh, gosh. So, which was really bad for him. Yeah. Really great yeah. for me because there's real people. And in was the this room. an open mic yeah. at the Haha? Ha? Okay. Ha ha open mic. I wow, paid that's $5 a brave family. for five minutes. Yeah. He sure. He brought in so many real people. I think I brought in some friends also. Oh, okay. And then I went up and I just fucking crushed in front of his family and then he bombed in front of his family. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, but it felt good to me because I was like, okay, I am good yeah. at this. Yeah. Good. And the fact that I could look at my material and be like, none of this is funny is a good thing. And leave it. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. I think some people are like, no, there's potential here. Yeah, like, that I'll Claremont crowd just didn't know. They no. didn't get it. So you like, trusted them. Me. Had you done it elsewhere? Had you tried the same material a lot of the different f- spots? The first time that I went up was Flappers Claremont. The second right. time I went up was the Belly Room. And I didn't go back oh, to the comedy gosh. store for like a year after Yeah. That was that a Sunday night open mic? Yeah. And it uh-huh. was traumatizing. Yeah. So like, the Belly Room is comedy store. Yeah. yeah. Two people almost got into a fist fight. Over your material. No, over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think her jokes are the worst. Yeah. No, I do. Uh, no, the two people got into a fist fight because they decided to do a bit where it was like uh, dudes that have jokes about women come up and tell their jokes to a woman. And then oh. she like will sort of like, you know, toss in like jokes yeah. and like step on their misogynist bullshit. Okay. okay. That was the bit. Oh. But it had to be stopped because this guy got super aggressive over the fact that a woman interrupted him. <laughs> wow. Jesus. Really? And she was like, dude, that's the bit. That was the thing. That was the, that's why you got in line to tell some jokes. Yeah, to that's me. That's the game so that we I were could... playing. Interesting. And he was like, no, you ruined my jokes. You spoke over me. And it's like, oh, my gosh. And then like him and the host got into a fight over the microphone that lasted for about oh my 40 gosh. seconds. Oh, gosh. They both had their hands on it, just jerking oh back my and forth. Oh, my gosh. Try, and them being like that <laughs> calm, I want to kick your ass, but I'm yeah, not going yeah, to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're like, bro, let go. No, bro, you let go. For like no. 40 seconds. A long ass time Jeez. for two dudes to be fighting over a mic in an yeah. open. And I was like, this place and is an a open fucking mic. hellhole. <laughs> the comedy store does attract some crazy people. Yeah. Yeah. That's the problem with uh, fame or a uh, famous <laughs> place. Ah, uh, sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. sure. Oh, my God. There's yeah. so many people that I saw that would go up on the mic. And they'd be like, you guys, I, I'm here. I can't believe it. I'm telling Joe to the comedy store. My whole life could change tonight. Yeah, and the door guy's like, nope. <laughs> it won't. Even if you had <laughs> jokes, even if you had jokes, it wouldn't change. And you don't yeah. have jokes. That's so the yeah. problem with uh, Kill Tony and Pollock sometimes. Some people mm. only go there. Yeah. They yeah. don't do any other mics. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. They're just trying to get famous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and that's that very sad. I mean, you know, bless their hearts. They don't know. Right? Bless their hearts. I don't know. So where are you from originally? Portland, Alice? Oregon. Portland, Oregon. Yes. Gotcha. Mm-hmm. And you moved. Where have you lived? I moved from Portland, Oregon to Chino, California. Okay. Because I didn't want to like, I was so scared of the big city. Uh, that I was didn't Portland? Pick, or no, hold on one LA. second, guys. <laughs> LA. Oh, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. All right. We're, we're back. There's going to be some awkward cut. Anyhow, uh, <laughs> Alice was talking about... You didn't have to let them know. I, I do. We had a commercial break. We were sponsored by... the you by Holy Water. Uh, Wait, what? <laughs> uh, sorry, huh? Sponsored by Holy Water. Exercise your children in the bathtub. Indeed. Indeed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we were talking about your, your, move, your oh, yeah, movements. Yeah. I was so I was so States. scared of L.A. because everyone in Port there's Oregon and California have this huge rivalry that California does not know or care about. Yeah, apparently. So Oregon just hates California, and they're like, so "Oh, you, the, if you yeah. go to L.A., you'll get murdered." So I was like, "Let me move like an hour and a half out into the suburbs and then drive sure. to L.A. every day." <laughs> sure. Because I didn't want to like I wanted to get a feel for the city and uh-huh. not just like pick a place at random and wind up in like a fucking a gang somewhere. war yeah. or something <laughs> that I, I I was led to believe. Uh, we're were around every, every corner. corner. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. Is it like they think they're more? What is the rivalry about? Progressiveness? Like Portland's uh, just so much more no, accepting. Oregon just treats Californians the way that Donald Trump treats Mexicans. They just hate him <laughs> for no reason. There's no. Ju- but no, like, that's not totally. F- some are good people. Yes, yeah, so right? some Californians are good people. But like <laughs> Oregon, really, they're like. Yeah. They, they're taking our jobs is a real thing that's said. Oh. They're, they're bringing crime and drugs is a real thing that's said. About they're, Californians. Yes. They're like, they're, Most they can't of whom drive. They're dangerous on the road. Latinx. They know this, right? Well, they, they're and basically also, saying. A lot of people that come out from L.A. <laughs> are people that are not from L.A. The yeah. people they went from. The transient Madison, through. Madison, Wisconsin to L.A. And then yeah. were like, Portland is a good spot. <laughs> right. And it's like Portland. They, they for growing up for years we were like all trained in this little secret like just always say it's raining oh. because then no one will want to come up and live interesting there. <laughs> and that's not true no 
<laughs> it's it's a fucking lie. It's a huge lie. Seattle tells the same lie. It's not yeah. always pouring down. Well, rain. no, right. And then when the internet came out, people realized Found that out. Portland was a good city, and they started moving there. And sure. our lie that it always always raining yeah. had to be stopped. <laughs> Because of information. Yeah, because people are like, no, this looks pretty mm-hmm. nice in the photos. I'm coming up anyway. Fuck you. <laughs> That's great. So you moved to Chino. Mm-hmm. And then did you move there with family or just you? Uh, Your family's still in Portland. Uh, me and my ex moved down. My whole I was going to move down with one of my sisters, and then she decided the last minute to stay in, in Oregon. Gotcha. But it, uh, everyone else, all my family is up in uh, still there. Cal- uh, Oregon, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Parents still married to each other. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. I can't wait to to get into your family history because that's really what I'm excited about. <laughs> but uh, all right, so let's talk about you. Talk. It was your open mic experience, your worst experience, my or worst. And uh, then I want to talk about your best. Okay, my the reason why I like soft quit for six months is because yeah. I got heckled by a Trump supporter. Oh but no! But not in a way that I was ready to like. This happened in February. To confront. He'd been in the office for like a month. Okay. And so like tensions were still very very high yeah yeah and i was ready like i was going up on stage every single night like if a fucking trump supporter says shit to me i'm gonna fucking you know tear, tear him apart. apart yeah right yeah of course but what happened was i told a joke where one of the punchlines was how i didn't want to have lunch with hillary clinton oh okay and the trump supporter yeah. thought that that meant i was a trump supporter so he heckled me in encouragement like right. we were on the same team and right. i was not ready for that at all <laughs> And the way I okay. handled it was very bad. <laughs> that is hilarious. So what did you do? You're like, oh no, I. Um. I, God, he. Uh, he he like cheered me on, and my response was to nervously laugh directly into the microphone. Uh huh. And then say, "Don't get me wrong, Hillary is my bitch." Okay. Which is not. <laughs> Then the Trump supporter <laughs> hated me, but the Hillary people in the crowd We're so also confused. didn't like me. Oh, sure. And so then he goes, boo. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> <laughs> and All right. then I just was like, hey, dude, we cool. And then I was like, why did I say we cool? I hate this man. Yeah, I, yeah, I'm of not course. cool. With Trump. Why did I say, hey, don't worry, bro, we cool? So now yeah. that the Trump supporters and the Hillary supporters, the, whole, the room hates me. And it's Florida yeah. versus Claremont, which is like 12 people, so it doesn't oh, matter. Yeah. But it was a comedy contest, and I was like, I know I'm funnier than all these oh, dorks. Oh, gotcha. But I wasn't that But night. how do I prove it? Yeah. yeah I yeah. wasn't. And then some woman got like, it was like a first, second, and third place. And the woman that yep. got third place was just a really tall bitch who went up and was like, I can reach things on the top shelf. It wasn't Sarah Lawrence? No, or? I don't play basketball. <laughs> no, this woman was. Someone else. It was not. It might that as well is now saying. famous, I'm sure. I think sure. Sarah Lawrence was still taking the comedy class at this time. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Shout out to Sarah. (laughs) Shots fired by Alice. Uh, Fantastic. So that caused you to soft quit. You just thought I I wasn't ready for this kind of confrontation on stage. Yeah. All of this bombing. My sets have been getting progressively worse because I was trying new stuff every single time I went up. I wasn't working on anything long enough to make it funny. I didn't know that was part of it. Right. So I was like, I would just go up. Something wouldn't work and I would throw it in the garbage. Yeah. And I was like, "That's this yeah. joke is bad. It had one chance to prove yeah, itself, that was it. and it's in the trash now. Like the men in your life. Yep. No. Yeah. <laughs> one strike, you're out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I mean, most to be fair, most of it was trash that probably shouldn't have been tried a second time. Oh. But I didn't know that yeah, there was yeah, a process. Yeah. yeah. So I was bombing Have you gone and bombing back? To Flappers Claremont? No. Yeah, now that it's closed, <laughs> yeah. you just go. Uh, to the, the old jokes that work, yeah. I still have. Yeah. I don't really do them But you haven't really tried them out yeah. again. Gotcha. Um, okay, so you soft quit. Yeah. Because I just thought, like, I am not getting laughs, and I just got heckled, and I couldn't handle it. I'm mm. not cut out for this. Yeah. And yeah. then eventually I just came back, and when I came back, I was great. I was like, no, 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 no. I can look back and be like, that material was shitty, and sure. my delivery was nervous and yeah. shit like that. So when you came back, was that at the ha-ha? Mm-hmm. Or in yeah. that, that beautiful moment is what's yeah. basically propelled you yeah. till now. Because it was three minutes of just fucking great laughs that i was getting and it felt really good that's awesome great so was that your best moment then so far or what do you think or just one one other good moment um besides the best moment moment is uh after the first time uh that i did kill tony someone from palm springs hit me up Mm. and was like hey come and headline for like 20 minutes no kidding and i went out there with the only 20 minutes of material that I had. I yeah. think I did every single joke I had. Wow. And I crushed for 20 minutes and they were like, nice. thanks for coming down here before you're going to be a big star. And I was <laughs> like, thanks. oh, thank you. Thanks, of course. Guys. Yeah. People. Yeah. It Tonight was, show next week. Right. Yeah. yeah. I was like, you guys have no idea how 
worthless I am as a comedian right now. <laughs> but they they brought me down. And they, they was that was my best moment for like early on. Yeah, that yeah. I was like, oh, that's I'm, crazy. I'm actually fucking good at this. Yeah, absolutely. That's great. Wow. So now and now, uh, how do you feel about your comedy career now? Now it feels really, really good. Yeah, it, it's like it. I'm not going to say that. It's going to make it's going to turn the audience against me. Uh, <laughs> You're going to get heckled by a Trump supporter <laughs> no. right now. Uh, no, it feels it feels really good. People people that I respect in comedy seem to almost all eventually say something to me along the lines of, hey, you're funny. Yeah. And that's what you want. You want yeah. the people that you think are funny to be like, hey, you're also funny. Right. And the fact that they have been doing that, I'm taking as a good sign. Yeah. It, yeah, you know. absolutely. So that's good. Well, great. Great. So your family's still in Portland. Yes. I want to get into now your religious okay. background because your family is religious, right? Yes. So what were you raised as? Um, we watched televangelists growing up and we went to church okay. too, but we were heavily into like laying hands on people yeah. and yeah. getting them out of wheelchairs. Mm-hmm. That was a big focus. Yeah. Uh, really just, just, find, bo- just bothering the Find the, the lame and crippled <laughs> <laughs> in your neighborhood. Yeah. Be like, come over. Yeah. We got to. So uh, what does that, that look like on Sunday? I mean, are you guys just sitting in front of the TV dressed up? No, or is um, it... we went to we went to a church and the church okay. that we went to was like an Assemblies of God church, which is really sort of watered down to sort of bring in the biggest group of people. They don't yeah. say hell. OK. They say eternal separation from God. Oh, wow. But then yeah. person to person, you're like, that guy's yeah. going to hell. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but in, sure. the, in the pulpit, their official position is eternal separation from God. Got it. Yeah, but Got we it. weren't we weren't allowed to dance at the church, which I which I didn't oh. know. Yeah, um, and so I grew so up making fun anyway. of people who were like super strict, and then they I found out like, oh, you, if you get married at the church, you can't dance at the oh. wedding because it's sinful. Interesting. I'm like there's dancing so you, in the Bible. Yeah. What do you do at the wedding? Then just kind of stand there. <laughs> yeah. Sway. No swing. You just shake hands with gross old dudes who tell you to have kids before your eggs go bad. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Which is partly true. Uh, or you can get your eggs frozen, right? Biological clock ladies. <laughs> it's tick, ticking. Tick, tick, <laughs> Actually, I heard, that, I heard that old sperm causes schizophrenia. So fellas, oh. have those babies before your junk goes bad. Interesting. Yeah. I feel like that's a lie spread by Portland. <laughs> I heard it in California. So. Oh, oh man, boy. there's oh a particular boy. look to people who have super old parents. Mm. Yeah, that you know what I mean? Look, you know, just. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, that's great. <laughs> kind of so his dad is like 92. <laughs> it was shit's insane. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So do you know like what denomination? I'm assuming it's Christian. Assemblies right? of God was the name of the denomination. Got but the it. thing is that the church was pretty normal. My family was weird. Okay. We were weird at home and we brought that to the church and tried to infiltrate it and they were like, Could you guys calm the fuck down? Like intense weird? What do you mean by weird? Um okay, and the so church we, was normal. If we got sick, I mean the church was not great. Okay. If, if we got sick at my house, my yeah. mom would have us lay down in bed, she would put in a tape of somebody reading the Bible and we would have to listen to that until we felt better. So for wow. like Wow. Interesting. Thirty six okay. hours. Yeah. You know, however long your flu lasted, you yeah. were in bed listening to a guy just like breathe heavy into the microphone <laughs> while reading, reading the Bible. <laughs> wow. And Old Testament or New Testament? Which one helped you feel better? I think better she had tapes of both. I think yeah. she would do the New Testament though, because that's Jesus talking. Uh uh-huh. He's real healy. Did you ever feel like it worked? I mean, yeah. As oh yeah. I mean, like my brother used to stutter, and like a faith healer came to our church and like laid hands on my brother like put his hands on my brother's face and my brother's atheist now but he doesn't stutter anymore interesting like placebo effect it keeps so many people around in the church sure sure it's weird when it happens to shit like i don't need glasses anymore and you're like what the (laughs) fuck happened (laughs) yeah you just believed and your brain was like fix the eyes she thinks the eyes work make the eyes work yeah 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 like the brain is it's really intense and i think that misdiagnosis account for a lot of miracles Oh, you go in your doctor's like, hey, I think you have breast cancer coming for a test on Tuesday. You go on Sunday to the church and you're like, they said I have breast cancer. Let's oh, everybody pray. And then yeah. on Tuesday they're like, no, we were wrong. Never There's mind. no breast cancer. And you're like, there was. But God <laughs> took it away. Yeah, sure. That and could happen. You believe forever and you vote for Trump. Did, <laughs> did either of you see there was a comedy sort of variety special on Netflix with this guy that did televangelist stuff? Did, you, did either of you see this? No, He's more of like a magician know. type. But he talked about like Jesus. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Jesus, the world's greatest <laughs> uh, sleight of hand magician. Yeah. yeah. He he did. Anyways, it was fascinating. What, 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 I don't what even remember the title, and I don't remember the. Wait, so like name. he was? It wasn't like a televangelist, like a the charlatan people. No, he's right? not an actual. No, he's not a televangelist at oh. all. In How fact, he was you? trying to expose 
the televangelist sort of oh i dig that this placebo stuff yeah, yeah so he did a magic show but made it like a televangelist meeting oh, uh, that's where clever. he invited people down from the audience and then you know he healed one person with like sight issues mm -hmm. and uh anyway yeah it was fascinating yeah no that stuff that stuff happens yeah a lot of it happens and I hate to say it because like these churches will go out and they'll be like, we got to be missionaries. We got to go to Asia and Africa and South America yep. to these really impoverished communities. We got to teach them about God. Yeah. Well, if you're an impoverished community yep. and you're having miracles happening at your church, then the white churches in America will continue to support you and give you money because like God's really moving down here and we need uh -huh. to help use our money to support that. So these impoverished communities in Asia and Africa and South America will fake miracles all the time. <laughs> And oh. then my pastor comes back to Portland like I saw somebody's eye get healed. It's like, no, he popped his eye out. <laughs> they prayed for him. He put his hands on his face, popped it back in, and was like, now it's back. Oh and it's like a gosh. glass eye. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Interesting. But then they give tons of money. So it's they, the, the impoverished communities are really being fucked over by churches, but they also have a good hustle going. Yeah, 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 yeah. How big are you into these conspiracy theories? You believe these wholeheartedly? Are there any others? <laughs> flat Earther, where are you on this? Uh, <laughs> flat Earth. The Earth is flat. No. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> so your church was normal. Your family was more intense about yeah. it. They still are intense about it. Uh, my your mom parents. is still very intense about it. Like my siblings one by one slowly have been like, either let's stop believing this or let's just calm it on down. Uh huh. Uh, I have one sister who's in it deep, but okay. the rest of them, I have four siblings. The rest of them pretty like chill. Like performance in it deep or what do you mean by... Um, no, just, just, she believes it. Just, she still goes every yeah, Sunday. Yeah, just believes a very intense yeah. version of the Bible. A very, gotcha. like, e faith healy version of the Bible. Uh-huh. So no medications in your house growing up? Well, that was one of the things that my mom liked, is that she did like, med she was like, God gave doctors brains so that they could figure out what's wrong with us and we can trust them. So that was a good thing. But I had so many friends who wouldn't go to hospitals because oh, that was, sure. like, not believing in Jesus. Yeah. So, like, I, I feel lucky I wasn't part of that. But that was around me, and it was considered normal. Mm -hmm. So would you take flu medicine and then listen to the Bible? Yeah. Okay. We'd have to get. She'd slather us in Vicks, and yeah. then we would listen to the Bible, <laughs> just all sticky, <laughs> in our bunk bed. But then, when the cure happened, you would blame the listening to the Bible, or at least she would. Yeah, she would say God uses the both. Bible and the medicine. And the medicine. Yeah. Nice. So that part was not that part was not so bad. It was like we couldn't celebrate Halloween because that was a devil's holiday. That was well, more of the. I mean, that's just stuff. a fact. What do Mormons do on Halloween? You guys know how we dress up. You. you do? Oh yeah. Mormons sure. get to dress up, and I didn't. What the fuck? I mean, you know, we're fun people. My mom used to make us pray that it would rain on Halloween so that the Is sinful that kids couldn't right? get candy. Wow. That's how much she hated it. Yeah. yeah, and yeah. She, she would put like a, she'd turn off all the lights and put a big sign on the door that had a jack-o'-lantern circled and crossed out. Yeah. And she was like, we do not trick or treat here, which all the kids just thought like, oh, there's a haunted house. And they all <laughs> rang the doorbell anyway. And your mom was like, no, she this would get is... indignant. Like one time <laughs> we, came, we came back from the church's like harvest party thing that they uh -huh. would have the alternative to Halloween. Sure. And sure. we had tons of candy because we had been volunteering. We weren't like dressed up. So when all the kids went home, the teenagers just took the rest of the candy. Yeah, beautiful. Uh, and then we came home and some people knocked on the door and we opened the door because we forgot it was Halloween. Oh, right. And it's like two toddlers. Oh. And they're in like Buzz Lightyear costumes yeah. and they're with their mom and she's yeah. on her knees like smiling and she's like, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. And they oh, go trick no. or treat. And your mom pops out. No, she was <laughs> she was not there. But me and my siblings had never given out candy before and our house oh, technically yeah. wasn't supposed to participate in Halloween, but yeah. these were toddlers. So we yeah. just reached in our bags and oh. gave them some candy. Yeah. Because we're like, I'm not going to be a dick to this <laughs> two <laughs> foot two tall kids. Buzz Lightyear right now. <laughs> that is hilarious. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah, we dress up. We dress up. That's not fair. Granted, not in all <laughs> the costumes that are available. Yeah, yeah, yeah uh, same. Our church was like no scary costumes. But one kid would invite a friend who would show up dressed as the Grim Reaper and they wouldn't kick him out, you know? Yeah, yeah. But I do feel like Halloween exposes some of the more sinful of the believers. Yeah. Because the slutty costumes come yeah. out and they're so tempting. You see so who's tempting. dressed as Jasmine and yeah. you're like, I see the loophole that <laughs> I know you're what's going on. I know what's going you're on here. Just, I see yeah. that midriff. I'm not saying Samantha. I disapproved. Uh, <laughs> I just am saying that it exposed. It exposed them in more than one way Halloween was a good uh, where do you stand in the church moment mm -hmm. like because you could be like look at how righteous we are we dressed as Bible characters right which is just wearing a series of towels <laughs> around you yeah yeah that's all because those costumes is just bed sheets and towels and they're not fun yeah. at all yeah yeah yep and the hair ties or you know mm -hmm. whatever bandana things yeah the Teenage Mutant, Mutant Ninja Turtles were the cool yeah. kids. Power Rangers <laughs> were cool kids. <laughs> yeah, they were like, the I'll masks. go to church, but I don't give a fuck. Right. You know. Right. So what led you away from the faith you were brought up with? 
Well, I was led to believe that like if you need money, if you need to be healed, if you need anything at all, the answers in the Bible, God will provide for you. Okay. So I needed money to yeah. stay in college. Sure. And so I was like, all right, well, I've been really good my whole life. I didn't drink. I didn't smoke. I wasn't fucking around. Mm. I was like, if anyone can get this shit to work, it's me. I really believe that it yeah. would work because I was yeah. always told it would work. Right. And then money didn't fall out of the sky. Unbelievable. And I know. But you the, had like 12 job offers. The and you just said, I don't have time. <laughs> yeah. Interesting. No, I, I okay. Had to, I had to drop out of college and I, and I had yeah. to start working at Walmart. And it yeah. took me like four years to figure out because like I was raised to think like if you want something from the Bible and it doesn't happen, then either something's wrong with you or right. something's wrong with God, which do right. you think is more likely. Right. So I, it took me four years to be like, no, I don't think I did anything wrong, but I must have done something wrong. Interesting. Because yeah. I didn't get that miracle. And after four years, I was like, nope, it yeah. just doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that experience, you basically, was it a piecemeal thing? Like, uh, I guess I'll just stop reading, but I'll still go to church? Um, or is it? I mean, like, I was, I was reading my Bible so intensely. And after that stopped, I just, I couldn't even, I, picking up my Bible, I felt exhausted because mm. of how much I'd been, like, exerting myself. Yeah. To try to get some money for college. Yeah. And nothing was happening. So then I was like, oh, I can't even fucking look at my Bible right now. I still sure. believed, but I was like, I just need a fucking break. And that break lasted for four years <laughs> and ended in me losing my religion. <laughs> <laughs> sure. I mean, yeah. baby steps away. Yeah. Right. So what is your stance on religion now? Um, I think they're all dangerous. OK. Yeah. Why do you think they're dangerous? What makes them so scary? Like Halloween. Uh, I mean, because when you, I mean, you just, you look at the numbers, you look at the statistics what of numbers? like, yeah. who, like, who is supporting these terrible politicians? Who is supporting these terrible policies? Yeah. Like, during You're talking the about early, the Democrats, right? Yeah, fuck up. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> during like yeah. the early 2000s, there was this sort of like, this giant wave. I mean, it's, it was going on before then, but in the early 2000s, being gay was more accepted, so more mm. gay kids were coming out, and during that time, there was this huge wave of homeless gay kids uh -huh. who were kicked out of their houses sure. by Tough people love. who were praying every day. Yeah. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. And it's like my parents were like that. None of us were gay. I mean, my sister's bi, but she didn't know it at the time. Uh, so <laughs> you rolled your eyes. <laughs> She, cause like if she, she knew, told, if of she, course she knew, if she would have told yeah. my mom that she was by, my mom would have kicked her out. It's like, we oh, were raised by those kinds of parents. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Gotcha. And so it's like, for me, I did think they're all dangerous because for as nice as my parents were to everyone in church, for as nice as all these people are yep. to everyone. Yeah. I talked to people who sort of, uh, my Sunday school teachers were very kind and sweet and loving people and had kicked some of their kids out for being gay. Interesting. So I was like, if God was real, he would tell these people, hey, don't vote for the candidate who's an admitted sexual predator. <laughs> yeah, sure. Because these people are praying all the time. So for yeah, me, it was so just he would have like, told them. Yeah. This, there's something not right with this guy. And I think yeah. that I think that when you can hold like you can hold people in that space of just like the stakes are so high. Religion is real. You can kind of make them do things. That's yeah. why I think they're dangerous. Gotcha. You know? Sure. Sure. Interesting. So you like the hypocrisy. Cause this, so when I had Travis on the show, he also talked about this being a huge negative for him with religious, right. Or with religions in general is that there is often a hypocrisy that happens. Yes. Uh, where the religion professes one thing and people outwardly seem to act <coughs> one way but then harbor very different feelings when I it comes mean, I don't to even home. think I don't even think that they're not being Christian. Like people mm -hmm. were saying like Donald Trump's not a real Christian. I've read the Bible 18 times because yeah. my mom had the whole thing sectioned out so sure. where we would read a little bit every day and we'd get through the whole thing in a year. Yeah. She was doing that before I was born and I lived with her till I was 22. Yeah. So just taking apart the first yeah. three years where I probably didn't understand anything that was being said to me. Yeah. That's about 18 times. Not yeah. counting all the times I was reading the Bible, going sure. to church every Sunday and Wednesday. Right. So like Wednesday for like a youth activity. Yeah. yeah, there's a lot of stuff in the Bible that supports the way that Donald Trump acts and thinks. And that's mm. why so many religious people like him. And okay. there's yeah. a lot of stuff in the Bible that is really misogynistic and super homophobic. So when these people kick their kids out, they're not even like disobeying the Bible. Yeah, there there's parts of it that say like God is love and you have to be loving. And then there's also parts that say like homosexuality is an abomination. So these right. guys. Right. You know, there's like you can hit your kids. That's the Bible. Like, <laughs> well, so it's I not think like it's I think they're hypocrites. It's like I think sure. they're doing what the book says and people just don't really know what the book says. Uh, interesting. See, I view it more as a love the sinner, hate the sin. 
Mm-hmm. And people in my church look at homosexuality, at least acting on homosexuality, as a sin. That's how I not necessarily. Too. Yeah. Okay. In my college, there was an openly gay professor who had was would talk about the fact that he chose celibacy because he was gay. Right. 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 And that's the life that he lived. Yeah. Well, I chose celibacy until I was twenty four. Yeah. So. You chose it, or the I women chose just... it. <laughs> if it not been for my religion, uh... <laughs> you would have been on the streets. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh man. Interesting. So, yeah. uh, I, yeah, I don't think they're hypocrites. I think they're doing yeah. what what you. I think they're doing things that you can interpret as just through mm-hmm. the Bible. So, there are benefits you think to religion, or you just think they're all there. Are it's scary. Such benefits. Too scary. I got into a car accident. I hit black ice. My car rolled upside down. Why is I it black slid. Ice? White ice. You hit white ice. Okay. Minority it's dangerous. ice. Dangerous black ice. It's on the streets. Um, <laughs> something must be done. Yeah. Starting uh, fights with other ice. It's black on black ice. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. you hit this I, unspeakable. I, I rolled my car upside yeah. down. I was sliding oh down the road upside down, and I the song Like a G6 was blasting over the Unbelievable, radio. Unbelievable, <laughs> of course. It was 5.30 in the morning, Yeah, and I was not scared at all. And I was like on, on hills. I was like sort of by these sort of cliffs edges I could roll down, yeah. and I didn't, but I couldn't see where I was going. Yeah. And I wasn't scared at all because I was like, if I die, I'm just going to go to heaven, but God's going to keep me safe, so there's nothing to worry about. And I was fine. And then when I was fine, I was like, yeah, see, this is what happens when you believe is you get into these horrible car accidents and, and you walk safe. away without a scratch. Sure, sure. And so I, now, yeah, if well, I you, hear a weird noise in an elevator, you freak I'm like, out. this is it. I should have learned how to <laughs> sing. I don't know what I was doing with my life. I'm terrified. Uh, there's Interesting. huge benefits to religion. I miss not being afraid to die, Seth. Well, why that can't was you just, great. so why, why all or nothing? I get the sense it's all or nothing. I don't, it's not that, it's not that I don't believe that there's any sort of God. It's that I'm not going to live my life like there is when it seems to me there's more reasons to think that there's not because I, for a minute I got like really high, smoked a bunch of weed and I was like, maybe okay. there's heaven, you know? Yeah. That would be so dope if there was heaven. That'd sure. Be fucking great. Of course great. it would be. Then I realized that there's probably too many living beings in the universe for there to be a heaven. There's not room for all of us. <laughs> and so I was bummed out. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, there's not one. You're putting we're... limits on God? Yes. Limits on Seth. God's power and yes. hospitality? Unless I get to heaven and it's just like somebody pressed like control I and inverted <laughs> the colors of the galaxy. And that's like it's the same exact <laughs> space. It's just like the, it's like yeah, the upside yeah, down, yeah, like the yeah. right side up is Got heaven. It. Got it. Like unless it's heaven's <clears throat> as big as the universe, which I sure. guess it could be because we're talking it about absolutely magic. absolutely is. <laughs> <laughs> not magic, but yeah, go on. Because you're Mormon, so you, you're going to get a planet, yeah? Well, if we make it, you know? Right. Yeah. If my wife and I do all that we need to, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, we we get to make planets. Your wife Another, doesn't get her own planet? I mean, we share it, okay? 50-50. <laughs> They're oh. going to share 50. You get the normal. What are you going to call your... I yeah. really... I'm, I'm not trying to be a, d- a If dickhead. she wants her own planet, she can make her uh, own planet. Oh I get God, my own yeah. planet, too. But what, what are you going to call your planet? What are you going to name your planet? Yeah, that's exactly what I was about that. I haven't really thought about that yet. I tried to write a space show. Yeah, I don't know. And Space show? What do you mean? I, a a show, TV show, show for space? A TV show that took place got in space. It, I had an idea for it. it. Star Trek. Got it. I'm with you. Uh, it was actually, you might even like it because it, it has to do with religion. Yeah. Um, I wanted to write a space show and I needed to come up with a name for a planet and I couldn't think of one. But then I had a dream and in the dream I was just dropped off on a planet and they yeah. said the name of a planet in my dream. And I was like, that's a great planet name for real life. What was the name? There were two planets that we found that we had to see if we could live there and they were called Proxima A and Proxima B. <laughs> And I was like, that sounds so Star Trek y. Like, that's that <laughs> is. That's great. Good ass planet name. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. yeah Proxima yeah. Centauri is the uh, closest star to us. Yeah. Wh- wait, what? Proxima Centauri. Oh, yeah, yeah. That was Alpha real Centauri, thing. or is it? I think they're two well, different. Well, Proxima linearly meaning location. Gotcha, so, gotcha. Yeah. Uh, Alpha Centauri, I think, is the big uh, giant red death sun <laughs> near it. Gotcha. Yeah. Fun yeah. fact. I don't know. I'm going to have to think about what I'd call my. I, I think you should call it Lorenzia. Lorenzia? Lawrence? Oh, maybe. Or, or, or Sethistan. Sethistan. I don't know. Sethstonia. Oh. Fancy. Ooh, I like that one. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway. I think you would like Names my idea for a space show. I, I would. Here's what it Go is. Go for it. I want to. I want it. I want the pitch. Earth is ruined. Beautiful. I'm, I'm in warming. already. We fucked it up. It's, yeah, it's of already course. happening. Yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, and we this is two years have from to now. go to yes <laughs> 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 takes place six months in the future. 
<laughs> yeah. Uh, we have we go to a different planet. Okay. So we're on a different planet, and sure. we found another one that. Gets, but it took for fucking ever to get there. Yeah. A bunch of people who died on Earth like froze their like either their bodies or their heads, and then they could be unfrozen later. But okay. this was only something that like r- you had to buy it. Like only rich oh. people could afford to oh do boy. it. Oh boy! All right, I'm already in. One woman who was very devoutly Catholic. Uh huh. She decided to have her body frozen because okay. she thought I'll die, I'll go to heaven, they'll unfreeze me, I can come back and I can be a missionary and be like, no, I've been to heaven, it's real. Interesting. And so then she wakes up on this other planet and is like, oh my gosh, there's no heaven and I'm back. Okay. And then it's just like, because if you had a bunch of frozen bodies from the 1800s yeah. today and we're yeah. like, let's unfreeze them, that would be unethical. Because they would look around at all the black people minding their own business and be like, I don't like <laughs> this one bit. <laughs> So you'd basically, okay. if you unfroze them, you'd have to like I mean, re-educate them. not everyone them. in the 1800s practiced God slavery. Damn not near every one of them. in the 1800s was a shitty Not thing. even everyone in the 1800s was American white. I'm from not the even South. I'm not even saying that, but the people who could afford yeah. to freeze themselves in the 1800s would have been the American white racist. <laughs> it's my really, point remains. It's really, it's really cheap. Point. But what I'm saying is anyway, that if you yeah, froze a bunch of people from yeah. 2019 and then unfroze them like a 500 years in the future, of course, then you would have a bunch of bigots because yeah, we yeah, would yeah. be hung up on trans shit that they would have gotten over like sure. in 500 years. Uh huh. So they unfreeze these people and then they have to like be reeducated and they're like gotcha. horrified and they're like losing their minds because that's a, it horrifying and they're. A, a little dystopian yeah. idea. I, yeah. I, yeah, I can but get behind that. In there. That was I my idea. I get behind idea. that. That was my idea for a show. Yeah, wow. All right. Not funny at all. So the religion benefit is apparently superhuman comfort uh, in times You're of just severe be distress. You so goddamn comfortable. Yeah, when, when horrible things happen on the internet, like I'll see a few people be like, oh my gosh, how terrible. And then all these Christians are commenting like God's still in control because they're not yeah. worried at all. Yeah. No. I'm so jealous Jesus of that. is on his way back. This is just yeah. closer to that time. Because I'm like, oh no, there's yeah. a bunch of school shootings. I'm like, don't worry, God's alive. And I'm like, and y- what? It, what? what's his plan? <laughs> To take the good people. What is he doing? <laughs> to take the good people. Right? He's going to take all the good people down. What, uh, this is what I'd, I'd love to know. I realize maybe your religion's a bit different, Seth. But yeah. like, wh- what, what, what do you do in heaven? Yeah. Good question. You, you know, you like. Don't, you don't right. fuck. I mean, no, you, you can't, do. You, you can't do Absolutely. all the sinful things, no, right? No, no we have intercourse. Mormon, Absolutely. Mormon heaven has fucking? Yeah. Well, Mormons yeah. like to fuck, so that makes sense. Christian heaven, I mean, heaven, it's a big no reason fucking. we get married. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know about the Christian heaven thing. Uh, heaven or Catholic like heaven. I mean, Christian heaven is just so broad. I feel like we're Catholic Christian, heaven's scary. So our version it's of Christian true. heaven evangelical is different. Evangelical heaven, I should say. Yeah, evangelical yeah. heaven. There's a lot of uh, evangelical heaven. There's things no that are, yeah, considered I, evil that I don't think really are. I had a pastor at a Pentecostal church tell me once that he thinks heaven, uh, you just stand with God forever. Wow. You just, just stand there and look at him. Yeah. But think about this. He's great. great. There's yeah. no, attention. <laughs> there's nothing he bad in heaven. Think about this, Travis. Heaven is dope because yeah. there's nothing bad yep. in heaven. Yep. That okay. means you don't have any of these brain chemicals that cause anxiety. Right. You're just getting fucking the good chemicals. Yeah. What's yeah. the name of the good chemical? I don't even remember. Uh, oxytocin. Uh, uh, it's <laughs> Oxytocin is a love hormone, serotonin, dopamine. At first, I heard oxycotton. Uh, and I mean, I that like, is the best. Like <laughs> you're just naming <laughs> drugs. You're not even naming. Oxytocin is the love hormone. Yeah, Natural oxy- chemicals. It's just yeah. there's constant oxytocin. Right. Well, serotonin, adrenaline, and serotonin, dopamine. And just yeah. All going through your brain all the time. So being in heaven is just like it's like tripping fucking balls. Sure. With angels and God. Yeah. And you don't you don't drown. So me and my yeah. siblings growing up, we were really looking forward to being able to breathe underwater. <laughs> yeah. Because we were all taking. Sure. Swimming lessons were like, sure, this would be dope. Sucks, but you yeah. can't drown in heaven. That means you can breathe underwater. You can do whatever you want. So just imagine right. that you're gacked out of your fucking head all the time. Or just walk on top of the water. You're d- yep. jumping into water. You're yep. looking at these like gorgeous like lakes and angels are flying everywhere. And maybe yep. you can fly too. Maybe. I see no reason why you couldn't because if you can't get hurt in heaven, that means you can jump off a cliff and land at the bottom and be fine. Sure. So there's rock jumping and you're doing <laughs> yeah. it while jumping. you're yeah. on drugs. <laughs> yeah. I, I think of favorite sci-fi films so i think about like star wars moving stuff mm-hmm. you know telekinetics oh that's what like that's marvel what you like to think of like moving things with your hand i mean no with mind oh, mind powers mind, yeah. yeah i can move things yeah. with my hand now that's which is pretty dope good but uh point. <laughs> but you know I using the force uh it dope. the matrix slowing down time and dodging bullets. i want to put together cool. the uh uh death star lego set with my mind yeah that's what there I you go that's, that's my that's nerdy Travis's heaven sad Legos. heaven yeah, Latter Day Saint heaven is achieved. I mean, like the exaltation, the highest. That's achieved, man and woman. You have to be married. 
And that's why having children no is such a key. single dudes gets to... That's right. You don't make it. you yeah. got to get married first. All right, so Mormonism. you got to be nice to a bitch to get into heaven. Or a woman. Uh. <laughs> Just a bitch. <laughs> What's the difference? I waka it. waka. I love it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Well, Alice, this has been so fun. I've got to wrap it up because I have yeah. to go get my children. Um, but... Thank Kids you so much for coming on. Ruining everything. I know. No. Aka, okay, you're really, taking it to heaven. Right? My life was so good until uh, <laughs> I, I love my children. I do. Uh, anything you want to plug? Where can they find you? Oh, th- it'll be too late by the time it come out comes out. But I'm just happy because tonight I'm doing my first sh- show at the main stage in the Improv. Yeah, Fuck congratulations yeah. on that. Yeah, That's exciting. You. Very fun. You'll be back though at the Improv. Yeah. So you can find her at the Hollywood Improv. Follow her on Instagram, mm-hmm. right, oh, to yes. find out when those spots would be. M I S S Alice Hamilton on Instagram. Miss Alice Hamilton on Instagram. Any other sites or? Uh, you're um, soon going to be on the Pretty Funny Women shows at the Laugh Factory. Yeah. That'll be exciting. They better put me on their fucking Instagram. Yeah. I'm trying to get those clicks and likes, nigga. <laughs> That's what we're doing. <laughs> Excellent. Well, thank you so much for coming thank on. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. Travis, any final thoughts, parting words? Uh, I'm stoked about heaven now. Okay. <laughs> yeah, good. Good. You got to get back to I'm going to name my planet uh, Cl- 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 Clyburn. <laughs> Shit, like I couldn't think of something funny <laughs> enough. All this growlings class is like wasted oh, all my yeah. body. Your Fuck. Sucks. <laughs> well, I thanks for it. tuning in, and we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>